Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Monday here in Australia, getting towards lunchtime and the markets are starting to move up and Bitcoin had a big massive move. I mean it spiked up to nearly 40,000 in a matter of minutes from 35,000. Now it's kind of tapered off around 38, but again we're still waiting for the markets over in the States to open they haven't yet that's obviously people probably preempting uh what they believe is coming and look there's a, a really big story that uh is going around at the moment that probably has people getting a little bit excited and we'll get to that shortly but look 1.53 trillion we're back over the 1.5 mark so that's really really good now it was pretty scary when we got down to about 1.1 8 trillion so just under 1.2 trillion and considering we'd been up at about 2.5 2.8 trillion something like that so quite a fall that really shook a lot of people out and if any of you are my sort of long-term viewers and you held you're probably now starting to see some rewards now not not necessarily at least some you know gains if you know unfortunately you bought at the top of Bitcoin 64,000 then you're still down but $64,000 Bitcoin down to $38,000 Bitcoin feels a lot better than buying $64,000 Bitcoin and it getting down to $28,000, $29,000. We're up $10,000 basically from the bottom. So that is, you know, that's pleasing. You're still probably not quite in a gain yet. But again, I can never offer you financial advice. I can just give you my personal opinion. No one's lost money in Bitcoin if they've simply held for four years or more. If they've held for four years or more, no matter what price they bought at, even if it was the absolute peak, they're generally well in profit four years later. So that's just something to kind of consider and keep in mind. So things are looking pretty good at the moment. I mean, look, Bitcoin dominance rise rising. So we're now up to nearly 47%. I think Bitcoin's going to probably be the first to run. It'll run pretty hard uh, and it'll suck a bit of money out of the altcoin space particularly when it breaks certain levels and we'll have a look when we get to the charts but it does naturally drag everything up so even though these will lose a little bit the altcoins will lose a little bit bitcoin uh will drag them all up anyway so they will just lose some percentages but they'll still be going up just not as fast and then again when bitcoin finally gets to some kind of peak then the altcoins are just going to start to go mental and we'll have that next altcoin season I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be but that's how it's played out uh, previously. Now, will it is it guaranteed to play out like that again? No, but that's the trend that it's followed, and it you know it hasn't broken yet, so we'll wait and see. Now, I mean, look at gas prices; they jumped up pretty quickly, so thirty three round about a dollar sixty right there. But I mean, look at the volume up eight point seven percent, so eight hundred and sixty four point two four billion dollars uh, starting to move. Uh, through the space at the moment so very very nice I mean just have a look it's basically a sea of green and we're nearly getting up to sort of double digit uh, gains for a lot of coins so all right what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100 anyway boom amp and we've got a story about that so amp doing extremely well extremely well BitTorrent boom nice move as well Zilliqa Digibyte Quant Rune, there we go. Even they've made a comeback from uh, all their kind of drama. And these are basically, you know, again, 15% and above in 24 hours is a pretty good gain. And look, any gain's a good gain, don't get me wrong, but it's that 15 plus percent that I really like to see in the 24 hours. But what you need to remember is generally when you see kind of moves like that, in the next the next day generally or within the next 48 hours you generally lose a little bit of that now again not always and i'm not a trader i'm just trying to let you know that if you see something that's pumped a whole lot one day you don't need to chase it just simply wait a couple of days it will have a pullback it always does even in the midst of a, a bull market now not right at the very end of a bull market like the full peak <coughs> oh, excuse me sorry everything's just going crazy and you've got to be careful there but again, never financial advice. So look, some great moves. I mean, Algorand, oh, very nice. Doing quite well. What about losses though? In the top 100, has there been anything that hasn't performed well? It's looking pretty bullish at the moment. Well, there you go. We've got a couple. So Flow is down a little bit. Ucash uh, down a little bit. Uh, Stacks down a tiny little bit. 
but then after that we're really just getting into the stable coins that are taking a little bit of uh, a loss and again they're they're generally at a loss when all the other coins are pumping and then when the other coins are dumping then the you know us dollar pegged ones and stable coins they're up a little bit but look we do have a couple of ones that are up so again space looking very juicy at the moment crypto is a crazy game you know when it just keeps kind of going down and it's already down 50 percent and it's looking like it's going down to 60 70 percent it's so hard to stay in this space it really is and i've been here for a while so i understand your pain but again just remember but now we can only really talk about bitcoin at the moment but even ethereum they came out in 2015 so there is a few coins uh, that are now starting to show that you know they've got some long-term basis other than bitcoin so ethereum and it's the same thing with Ethereum. It doesn't matter what price you bought at, if you held for four years, you are well in profit. And when I say well in profit, I mean well in profit. So that is, you know, kind of the key indicator there that if you've done your research, you're in a good project, you believe in it, you just simply got to hold. And, you know, it might take four years, but in four years, you'll probably be in great profit. Unless you're in a stable coin, they're just always going to stay about a dollar, you know, short of you putting it in something like Aave or Curve Finance or whatever, then you can make some sort of yield on it. But again, hardly any losses and some really good gains there. Now let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. And I mean, have a look at this, that RSI when it broke out, it really broke out, but it is already starting to get up around that kind of oversold territory. But that's not to say it can't go much higher because I mean, look over here, it really went sort of way outside of that line. So just be careful, you know, probably a good chance we're gonna have a bit of a pullback. And I mean, look at these, one, two, three, four, five, six green candles in a row. So whew, when Bitcoin likes to move, it likes to move. and. Again, followed this, followed this down uh, trend perfectly, bounced off it, just touched it, almost touched it, bounced off it perfectly, and look at that. Now, we still need to get above this $42,000 level before we can get too excited. It could easily come up to sort of 42, reject, and then come back down again. That is definitely possible. And then not only that, we've got to be able to break this and stay above it. We could have a little bit of a fake out and then come down and start to set uh, more lows again. I'm not sure we're gonna go lower than this, but that's not to say we won't, but these are the key levels. So 42, gotta break that. And then depending how long, you know, we might get a bit of a sell off some time over the week. And so it might not be till about here. So let's say, you know, 45,000 as of the 5th of August, we need to be able to have a daily close above that. And the bullish side is we go above it, roll over, come back, retest it, and then bounce off. The bearish is we maybe sort of just wick above it and then start to come down lower again. That's definitely things that could happen. Not saying that's what's going to happen, just saying it's definitely possible. And I mean, look at the MACD. It was basically the same as the RSI. Boom, it's just starting to move right up. <sighs> Who doesn't love this space, eh? What's not to love about it? Well, other than when it's getting absolutely caned and your portfolio's down by, you know, uh, substantial percentages. But look at the Bollinger Bands. Again, they got so tight, and now, look, they've just expanded right out. They really did make a move. And like I said, when, when it goes, it will go. And we're just lucky that it went more to the upside because we did have some downside. We can see from here it just went down and down and down. But then, I mean, boom, look at that upside. And it is still early in the week. Uh, you know, the markets are yet to open overseas yet, so it's only three in the morning. We've got to wait till about, oh, let's say probably nine, ten o'clock in the morning, uh, stateside time. Uh, we might see a bit of a pullback again to close any CME gaps. Uh, and so, you know, we could be looking at something like about sort of $32,000 uh, in the next few hours. Whether that happens and if it'll stay down there for that long, that's a you know that's another question. We'll have to wait and see. But again, that was Friday afternoon sort of uh, close right there. So again, was it around about thirty three thousand? What do we got? Thirty three thousand. Let's just say roughly eight hundred. I would expect that we're probably going to come back down uh, and close that. And it might not be a full uh, candle body that'll come down there. We just might see a wick and then we could shoot back up just to close that CME gap. Something to consider. All right. Now, I brought a story yesterday saying I was worried about synthetics and that their tokens had been removed from Uniswap. 
That's actually not true. I've done some further investigation, so I do apologize. So what is supposed to have happened is Uniswap has removed the tokens from their website. At least that's what they said, but I've gone to their website uh, and found different. So basically this is the Uniswap uh, page. So it's not the actual DEX itself. The DEX still has all the tokens. It is decentralized. Once something is on there, it can't be taken off. But what they allegedly said that has been done is they've removed 169 synthetic tokens from the website. But again, I went down here uh, and then you can go to tokens list over here. That brings you over here and this is all the Uniswap ones and then synthetic tokens. I'm pretty sure they have more than 67 tokens. But then you click on here and as you can see, they're all still here and it gives you the addresses for them as well. So synth inverse Bitcoin, synth inverse uh, Aave, you name it, a whole stack of uh, difference since there. So they are all still there on the uh, Uniswap uh, DEX and yeah, it's not as bad as what I first thought, which is good, uh, but it was a little bit scary at the time and you know, even the best of us who have been around the space for a while can still get caught up in a little bit of hype. So I'm a lot more uh, bullish about synthetics now, but in saying that, I still think they're probably going to have to get some kind of regulation going or otherwise their avenues of cash going in and cash coming out and things like that uh, without regulation, uh, particularly AML, anti-money laundering and maybe even know your customer uh, type stuff. So KYC, uh, they could really be hit hard by regulators. But again, I'm not trying to fight it. We'll just have to wait and see, but I just get the feeling like it's probably gonna be better for them to get on the front foot and do that kind of stuff rather than be on the back foot and again, face really heavy regulation. And then they just get pushed out of uh, the space, you know. Nothing can probably be done about the actual uh, site itself because it's decentralized and autonomous, not run by anyone. But the avenues of people getting in and out of it uh, and particularly cashing in and out of it, they could be severely hampered by regulators. And that's what I feel might happen. But again, we'll have to wait and see. I'm still super bullish on synthetics uh, after 24 hours of thinking it could be really bad, uh, particularly if uh, they had have lost uh, all their liquidity on Uniswap. That really would have hurt but things are still looking good for synthetics, so that's good, in the short term at least. All right, FTX, so cuts leverage limit to 20x from 100x as criticism of margin trading uh, in crypto grows. I actually like this idea. I think 20x is way too high. I don't think there should be any leverage above maybe 3 to 5x. I think that should be it. It just makes it so much harder for people to come in and get completely wrecked. It's not that you can't get wrecked on 3x leverage or 5x leverage, you can, but this 20x, 50x, 100x leverage, it really doesn't take the price to move much at all and then you've lost everything that you've put in. I don't like leverage trading. Uh, yeah, I've just seen too many horror stories. There are people out there, really, really good traders, they use it and they use it very well and they make a whole lot of money but the average person sees this kind of stuff and says, I can 100X how much money I can make, I'm doing it. And they jump in and as soon as they've put the order in, the cryptocurrency has moved probably downwards the tiniest amount and they've been liquidated. They don't understand stop losses. They don't understand that the higher the leverage goes, the less the coin has to go down before you get liquidated. Yeah, really not a fan of it. So I'm glad that FTX is cutting their leverage down. I'd le like to see it go even lower. I don't think there should be anything above really 5X leverage. I think that should be the absolute maximum. But it looks like Binance is doing the same. So CZ came out and said, Binance Futures started limiting new users to a maximum of 20X leverages last Monday. And they're going to do the same thing to existing clients uh, over the next few weeks. So existing clients can still do 50x and 100x, but they're bringing it all back down to 20x leverage. And like I said, I even think 20x leverage uh, is way too much. I don't like leverage at all in general. That's why we have such uh, big sort of sways in the market because of all the leverage in it. So the less leverage, the more stable our market will become. But look, at least it's a start. This space is starting to get cleaned up. We do need regulation. We just don't need heavy handed regulation. You know, we need to have ways of ensuring, you know, everyone's safety, you know, from bad players, bad eggs and things like that. So while I'm a massive fan of decentralization and I want it, there has to be a small element of sort of centralization in certain areas just to make sure 
that they can go after, you know, bad players and bad eggs, bad, you know, bad programs, things that are just complete outright scams and it's obvious. We should have a way of being able to get in there and simply remove that. What we don't want is regulators that can say, we just simply don't like that and that's why it's getting removed. That we can't have. We need a free market outside of outright scams that are just ripping people off. And then, you know, if people do get ripped off, we obviously need to have ways to identify the people that were running those platforms, projects, programs, whatever they were, and go after them. And the good thing is we have seen that. I mean, BitConnect and all sorts of things. I really believe the only kind of, you know, anonymous thing we need is Bitcoin. Bitcoin, I love the fact that it's anonymous. It's so decentralized and there obviously is no one, you know, point of uh, sort of failure for it. That should remain as is, anonymous. We don't need to know who created it. They did it for the greater good, or at least we hope that's why they originally did it, and it seems to be working out that way. Everything else, we need to have people that are accountable uh, and things like that. All right, moving on. So Ample Stocks, uh, we saw that it made a big move. So it's gone up because its stablecoin Ample is now part of Aave's lending platform. So that's why it saw such a big move. And look, it's gone up 70% in two days. But that sounds, you know, like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And it is. But a lot of coins have gone up sort of by that in the last sort of, you know, seven days or more. We've had coins move quite substantially. All right. Robinhood. This is very, very interesting. Now, I don't use Robinhood, but this makes it a lot more appealing. So Robinhood, uh, it's going to go into crypto lending and staking services. So they're going to open their own crypto wallet and it says here, Robin Hood held a roadshow ahead of its IPO on Thursday. The company said it had invested in crypto lending, staking and wallet services. This is the future. Staking, you know, and lending and all that. This is where it's all going. I mean, lending's been around for a while and there's obviously some issues going uh, on at the moment with, again, things like BlockFi. But really, BlockFi has been targeted you know, like I said the other day, crypto, there is a war going on at the moment. It is attack under FUD. BlockFi is not doing anything that Kraken's not doing or you know any of these other Celsius platforms and things like that, and I'm not having a go at any of them. I like all of them. But why is BlockFi being targeted? There's got to be some reason. And it's not simply because they uh, you know, let you lend, borrow, and uh, earn interest. That is absolute garbage. But that's what's going on. That's the space we're in at the moment. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you. Then they try and fight you, and that's what's happening now. We've got you know, all sorts of things happening. But the thing is, it's not a legit fight. No one in their right mind, not Janet Yellen, not you know, Gary Gensler, not anyone, is going to come in and try and over-regulate this space. They just can't. They know, and I said this the other day, the system that we have, the current traditional financial system, is broken. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. It is going to just keep going the same way it has been, which is down and down and down. The fiat money system, it doesn't work. It never has. Every single one of them has ended up the same, eventually being knocked off by another one, and then the next one does exactly the same thing. It'll be the you know, the world reserve currency. Everyone will want it until it's printed into oblivion, and then they move on to the next one. It's just kicking a can further down the road. We need a new system crypto is that new system and people are just moving on to it so this will actually be big for robin hood and i think a lot of people are going to get on board again i don't use robin hood or anything like that but i know a lot of people do and so they'll be liking that i think this would have to be the news that's probably got the market moving at the moment so amazon plans to accept bitcoin payments this year claims an insider and they said that's where it begins with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin won't be the end. There's talk that Amazon will have their own uh, digital currency that you can use within Amazon and things like that. And then next, we'll just have to wait and hear that Amazon has probably bought a whole stack of Bitcoin and put it on their balance sheet. And Apple and all sorts of companies, they literally all are going to do the exact same thing. They're not going to have a choice. This Bitcoin payments, I like the idea of it. I just don't think it's going to work. People aren't going to want to spend Bitcoin until Bitcoin, whenever that may be, it could be tomorrow, it could be 10 years, could be 20, 30 years, till it sort of flattens out and it's lost all that volatility. Once it is a stable price, that's when people will be happy to spend it because they're not going to you know, spend maybe $5 worth of Bitcoin today 
uh, for 10 years time that $500 worth of Bitcoin could have been worth $50,000 worth of Bitcoin that's just not what people are going to want to do but then, then again that's sort of referencing Bitcoin to the dollar maybe in 50 years time we don't have the dollar at all and everything is off a Satoshi level uh, and that would make things a little bit different but last couple of stories all right Coinbase so the executives investors are hit with lawsuit over Nasdaq listing again this is more just it's FUD it's people you know, there's a coordinated attack on crypto at the moment and it's not to kill it and end it although some people would like it to simply go away some of the really old traditional uh, finance people who just simply aren't willing to change but outside of that it's just trying to be held down for long enough for traditional finance to move into this new space now the thing is though is they're not going to move into it in a massive way don't get me wrong they're putting what we would consider massive amounts of money into it but they haven't really got into the space yet they're still waiting for regulation they're you know like most people put a little bit in and a little bit in and if it keeps doing better they'll put more and more and more until at some stage they're sold and then they're sort of you know not all in but very heavily into the space so I really do see massive upside for this space. So it says down here, this is what the complaint was. So according to the complainant, the registration statement and prospectus used to F, uh, F I don't even know how to say this, uh, effectuate the company's offering were false and misleading. Look, maybe they were, I don't know. I'm, I'm no expert, but I, again, I just get the feeling like this is all FUD. There's just constant stories coming out at the moment to try and you know suppress this market and again it's simply so the old guard can get on board and get a foot in before they let this thing go and again when it starts to go and maybe it already has again going back to here it looks like it's already started to make a pretty big move but we're not out of the woods yet again 42 and sort of 47,000 they're the levels we're looking at but once they do go it's going to be big and stuff like this is just going to go away BlockFi maybe they have to pay a fine or something I don't know I don't think they should have to again XRP maybe has to pay a fine Binance gets regulated and then this space is just going to move those you know those companies have been around for too long they are the forefathers they're at the front of the whole crypto space they're not going anywhere they are just yeah it's like the new kid on the block Sometimes they can face a bit of a hard time, but eventually everyone sort of makes friends, unless, you know, the new kid on the block's just a real piece of uh, work, then maybe not. But eventually, you know, the new person who shows up, people are a little bit sketchy and funny about them at first, but then they start to get to know them and everyone starts to get along. And that's what I see happening in this space. Last but not least, all right, number of cryptocurrency ATM uh, locations soars past 24,000 worldwide. Again, this space is growing. It, the signs are all there, and maybe the, fi the sorry, the price is finally starting to catch up with all the positive news. Unfortunately, fundamentals uh, don't equi uh, equivalate to price in the short term. Long term, they do. If your fundamentals are great, then and you know, and you've got a good marketing team, they're really the kind of key things. Is fundamentals? You got to have a good project, and then you got to market it right. And eventually the price will catch up to all of that sometimes the price can lag behind though it can be fundamentally such a solid project and you know such a really good thing whatever it may be if it's not cryptocurrency or something else but people just haven't got onto it yet and then eventually they start to hear about it and you got to hear about something a few times before you look at it and then you might have to look at it once or twice before you try it so this is all something that takes time but I get the feeling like all the bullish news that we've had excuse me is fine the pro, uh, the price is finally starting to catch up with it fingers crossed that's what's going on all right very early in the week and again things are just looking really good and there's a million charts you can look at you can look at all your altcoins and all the rest of it but they really are all dictated off bitcoin if bitcoin does well everything will do well if bitcoin does bad everything does bad in the crypto space and at least at the moment they make that may change in the future you know maybe the flipping happens and ethereum comes out on top or some other coin who knows but until we see that this is really the one chart you need to look at when bitcoin is not doing well everything's going to bleed when bitcoin is doing well everything else will do well bitcoin will just lead the way it really is the key indicator so if you want to 
come into the crypto space and sort of understand it, understand how to follow the Bitcoin chart. That may not last forever. Maybe we've only got two days left and it suddenly changes. But I think for the foreseeable future, at least, as long as you can understand and follow the Bitcoin chart, you can have a good idea of where the market is heading, where it's at, uh, and obviously where it's been as well. Because while the past doesn't dictate exactly how the future is going to be, it's a really good indicator of how things are going to play out. All right, that's it for me. It's brand new start to the week. I hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train at the moment. And so that's really, really good for everyone, including me and you. And I'll see you next time.